Today we will compare how to make a game in Unity and another in 3JS. The game we will make will be the same as the one made in the Unity course Create with Code. It will be a car game where you control it and try to avoid or crash with the obstacles on the road. Now it's time to program it. So let's go over the features that our game will have, such as controlling the car, having the camera follow the car in third person, collisions, and gravity. The first thing we'll do is configure the car, which will be represented by a cube on the screen for the time being. First, we create a project in Unity and add a cube and a plane. We create our HTML document in 3JS, where we reference the JavaScript document main.js. In main.js, we reference 3JS and begin writing code. First, we'll need a scene, a camera, and a renderer. Then we'll build the loop that renders the scene and the camera. Finally, we'll incorporate the cube into the scene. Now, in third person, we'll tell it to move forward, turn, and follow the car. In Unity, we will control the movement of the cube and make the camera follow the player in third person. To do this, we will first create our scripts, one to control the vehicle and the other to follow the vehicle. In 3JS, we'll do the same thing, but first we'll add some functionalities to help us with development. First, we'll add orbits to allow us to move the camera with the mouse, and then we'll add some lines to show the X, Y, Z axis. Let's add the ability to move our cube with the key now. Next, let's add the camera following the cube. To do this, let's add a tab of actions where we can choose whether we want to see the camera in third person or in orbit. We now add obstacles in a racetrack. In Unity, we'll stretch the plane we made and then add other red cubes to serve as obstacles. Finally, we'll test to see how it looks. In 3JS, we will add the functions add plane and add obstacle to the scene and see how it looks. We are now adding collision and gravity simulations. The only thing we would add in Unity would be rigid bodies to the cube and obstacles, followed by a triangular prism to allow us to fly to the obstacles when we collide with them. To add collisions and gravity in 3JS, we must add a new library, in this case Canon.js. To add it, we download the document, then reference it and begin using it. First, we create our physics world and place some parameters, such as gravity, where all the bodies that will be affected by it will be, and then we add the cube to the world. Finally, our world is updated 60 times per second. Now we'll see how it looks. You can't see anything because we haven't yet painted the physical world. But first let's add the Canon debugger, which will make our physical world appear. Now we can see that the cube is affected by gravity, which is fantastic. Now we will add the track and the obstacles to the physics world. And then we will make the cube move. To move it we need to apply force, and to rotate it we need to apply torque. We also need to add a material to the bodies, and define how they will interact when they collide. But for now we will add a minimum friction that will allow the cube to slip in the plane and move easily. Now we will paint what happens in the world of physics, so that in the loop we can make the position and rotation of the cube of 3JS equal to the cube of Canon JS, and the same with the obstacles. In addition, we will add the triangular prism. We could add it from Blender, as we did in Unity, but we will take a different route and create it from vertices and faces, which we will then add to our cube and see how it looks. Finally, the 3D models are added to make it look cool. We use the Unity package provided in the course to replace the cube with the car, track, and boxes, and then we add a background of mountains with clouds. That's all there is to it. In 3JS, we do the same thing, but to import, we must first export the Unity files, convert them to FBX, and then pass them to Blender, where they are converted to GLTF, a more appropriate format for the web, before adding the module that loads GLTF documents. Then we added the car, as well as the track and box textures, and finally the mountains and sky. Let's see how it turns out. That was the comparison. And as we can see, 3JS is much more laborious because we lack an editor. Plus we have to add every feature we want from other libraries. But at the same time this forces you to know more about how each part of the system works. That's all for now, I'll see you in the next video.